Lord, we thank you, we honor you, we praise you, glorify your name, Lord. Thank you for this day, thank you for this season, thank you for each and every person that came out. Holy Spirit, have your way, and Father, let faith arise in our hearts. All the plans of the enemy be thwarted. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Welcome to Friday Night Faith Fight. We're, you can be seated. We're starting a new series tonight. God changed it. I put an announcement on Facebook, but I lied. Uh, that's what I've been studying, and I thought that's what I was going to minister. But look at your neighbor and say... What faith will do. What faith will do. And to you out there at Facebook Live, what faith will do. Turn to the book of Hebrews. As you can see, I have another book marked. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Our last series, we talked about the measure of faith and the growth of faith. This series is going to be what faith will do. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, starting with verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of not things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Now look at your neighbor and say, faith obtains. Faith obtains. If your faith ain't obtaining, you ain't doing it right. Turn to the book of Numbers. Out there in that world, if your faith is not obtaining, you ain't doing it right. I'm going to preach this to set it up, but we're going to go back to the story of Moses. God dropped this in my heart that he will let a whole generation, not just one person, not just a church. We often question God, why, God, why? Lord, why are you letting this happen? God, why did this have to happen to him? Why did this have to come upon them? But if you look at your Bible, God will let a whole generation of believers wander around aimlessly, not getting anything done. Moses was called to set God's people free. To redneck that, Moses was the miracle man of his day. If you followed his ministry, he had a stick that if he threw it on the ground, it would turn into a snake. And if magicians threw theirs down and they turned into a snake, Moses' stick snake would eat up Pharaoh's stick snake. Amen, that's right. Now, we got a generation out there now that's seeking after signs and wonders. they laying on the graves of dead saints of God thinking that they can receive some kind of power by laying on somebody's grave. Uh-oh. Come on. The whole generation, the atheist, what they will tell you that is if I ever see God do anything, I believe. Faith don't come by seeing. Moses was a miracle man of that day. He had a stick that would turn into a snake and eat the other stick. Snakes, that's hard to say. Bless them, Lord. He could tell the locusts to come and they would invade the city of Egypt and take over. He could touch the water that was fresh yesterday and it would turn to blood. And you had all the children of Israel watching and seeing these miracles, these signs, and these wonders. So a lot of you praying, Lord, let me see an angel. 
Come on, we're, we're in a corrupt generation that are not focused on God's Word and God's promises, but we are seeking after signs. And I believe in signs. He told us, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils. They'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt them. And they'll speak with tongues. And they'll lay hands on the sick and they recover. Yeah. Supposed to follow believers. The children of Israel is watching. They knew about when Moses was a young man, he killed an Egyptian overlord to free an Israelite slave. And now, ever so often, he's in Pharaoh's face saying, Let my people go. Yeah. Put that in today's term, that'd be like me standing before. Trump or Putin yep. and tell them let me and that'd be like me going in there with my old walking stick that Anthony Blair carved for me uh, out of an old bush that I used to have to lean on and saying Trump let God's people go and throw my stick down and turn into a snake the whole world would send me an offering that day this Facebook Live and my PayPal account, you wouldn't be able to count the money that would flow into it that day. But preach the word. Yeah. 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 A lot of people think faith. I remember the days of the faith movement. What are you talking about? Yeah. They think that faith passed away when Kenneth Hagin died. Yeah. Turn to the book of Numbers. Moses is a miracle man throwing down sticks, calling locusts, turning water to blood. Hmm. Numbers, the 13th chapter. The book of Hebrews I read said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. People of faith are not a people that's seeking what you can see. They're not seeking to see a manifestation. They have the evidence in them that healing belongs to them no matter what their body says. Prosperity belongs to them no matter what their bank account says. They are not moved by what they see, hear, or feel. Amen. Amen. It's a spirit of an atheist when we have to see something to believe. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that again right yeah, now. Yeah. Worldwide media. Yeah. It's, it's an atheistic spirit if you need to see in order to believe. It'd be like me going home to my dad tonight. He'd be 90 year old next month. Dad saying, boy, I love you. Hey, you're going to have to show me, Dad. I, he says he loves me, but i, I got to see something. Come on, that sounds funny when I say that, but it's exactly what we do to God. I will believe you, Lord, if you show me something. Israel has a great, great miracle man. <coughs> he turns frogs loose into the Egyptian camp. And the Israelites are seeing it. They see the stick turn to a snake. They see the locusts everywhere. They see the fresh water turn to blood. And now there's frogs everywhere. Anybody lays down, frogs in the bed. And then Moses goes ahead and curses all the firstborn children. Come on. They, what I want you to see out of this story is, is Moses had one of the most powerful in his miracle ministry was not to a local church, but his miracle ministry was
was to the greatest superpower on earth. And when he told them that the children are going to die the next morning, when everybody woke up, the ones that did not have the blood on the doorpost, yeah. they was dead babies everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. That's a prophet. Israel saw all that. That tore up the enemy so much. Signs and wonders are a demonstration to the non-believer that there is a God. Israel was not affected by anything they saw, but that morning Pharaoh woke up and realized that next time old Moses asked me to let these people go, we getting them out of here. I got frogs everywhere, locusts everywhere, my baby's dead, my water's turned to blood, everything's falling apart yeah. next time he wants to go we're going to let him go yeah. well, Moses and his people goes around and asks the Egyptians for their gold jewelry and silver and the crazy thing is is they got it they was Egyptian women taking off pearl necklaces and yep. giving it to them little Jewish girls. God's never going to bring you out that he don't have your provision it's met. Right. When yeah. Jesus was born, the Magi showed up with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Yes. <clears throat> it's a great story. Moses is doing what he's called to do. He's had all these miracles, signs, and wonders. He shook a nation into the fear of God. And he's leading God's people out. And they've got the wealth of Egypt in their wagons and around their necks and on their hands and in their backs. And Pharaoh decides, I ain't letting them go. Some of you think when you're being chased down, when something's always running behind you, trying to stop you, trying to prevent you, you think and worry. The church has taught you that you've done something wrong, that you've took a wrong step. I know it's the blessing of God is upon you. Yep. I'm not worried about people going through trouble. I'm worried about the ones that Satan don't never bother with. Yeah, really. If he ain't never messing with you, it's probably because he's already got you. Yeah. Yeah. Moses is leading them out and Pharaoh gets on his chariots and we've had movies about it and preachers has preached great sermons about it. They get to the Red Sea and Egyptians are closing in behind them. Every time God does something great for you, it will be at the place that you can't go back where you came from and it looks like you can't take one step forward. That's right. Amen. If you can do it, more than likely God didn't tell you to. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. That's big. Yeah. Yeah. They take a step forward, they're drowning. Yeah. They turn around and go back, they're back in slavery and bondage. Yeah. If that's what your life feels like, you can't in no way turn around and go back, but there's nothing in you that can take a step forward. I came today to tell you, you are right at the place for a miracle working, all saving God to show up on your behalf. Amen. Moses finally thinks to talk to God about it. Lord, what do you want me to do? God don't never ask you for something you don't already have. Come on. Yeah. He, he's not going to tell me tonight to give away a houseboat. I don't have no houseboat. Moses is, uh, Lord, what do you want me to do? It looks to me like very quickly the miracle man forgot uh, the miracles uh, that he had just performed. So you can't base nothing on signs and wonders. And God has to remind him, Moses, uh, you got a stick in your hand. Same one that he touched the water with and it turned to blood and he throwed it down and it turned to a snake. The same one he leaned on. Hold it out and Moses holds it out. 
And we've seen the movies, the waters part, and the children of Israel pass through on dry ground. It says that the waters made walls on each side of them, and they walked through, and as the last little Israelite person stepped out of that seashore, the walls caved in, and what was intended to drown the children of Israel now drowned your enemies. What Satan has designed to destroy you will be the very thing God uses you at to, to drown the enemy. <laughs> we all want to dodge what we've been through, but your greatest giftings and your greatest calling and assignment is to use the very noose He wanted to hang you with to hang the enemy. Amen. Oh, it looks like a glorious day. They're free. Pharaoh and all of his military is drowned. We're on the other side of the sea and we got all this Egyptian gold and we're no longer slaves. We've got a miracle man pastoring us and leading us and God had told them, go ye over and take this land. What I read you is faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, elders obtain. Yeah. Are you obtaining good reports? Yep. If my daddy ever taught me anything, my dad lives better than any preacher I know. Never discouraged, never frustrated, never mad, never aggravated. And he's always told me my whole life, there's a good and a bad to everything. You choosing to look at the bad. Mm -hmm. He preach that to you all. There's a good and a bad to everything. You're choosing to look at the bad. Now think about what had happened this day. Their pastor had just shook the greatest kingdom on earth with miracle signs and wonders. They had just gathered up the wealth of the wealthiest nation on earth and they just watched his armies drown in a sea that saved them. It's a great day. Now all they got to do is go take that mountain that God said belonged to them. And you know what happened? The first thing that happened, Todd took a big drink of water. <laughs> Should be a day of triumph, victory. They should have all been helicopter shouting yeah. that the great I am. Yeah. Yeah. I should have been talking. You remember when Moses throwed his stick down? <laughs> well, uh, that magi throwed his stick down and Moses snake in his. Yeah. Do you remember when they went to drink that water and it was yeah. all they should have been. What well, the reason you're supposed to give your testimony is that what God did for you yesterday stays fresh in your mind. should have been a great day. But it was actually day one of a 40 year journey. Not 40 days, not 4 days, not a month. The, it was the beginning of 40 years of murmuring and complaining and saying to Moses, we need something to eat, we need something to drink. And then when they make it to Canaan's land, the land that God had told them they could have, let me read some. Numbers, the 13th chapter. Well, let's start in verse 17. And Moses, everybody say the miracle man. The miracle, the miracle man. man. Moses sent them to spy the land of Canaan and said unto them, 
get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land. What is it? And the people that dwells there, if they're strong, or are they weak? Few or many. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, what cities they be that dwell in, whether it be tents or strongholds. When a miracle man is telling you to do an assignment that God did not tell you to do, that's the generation we live in today. We're following after signs and wonders and miracles and we've got preachers and prophets all over the nation telling people you've got to do this and you need to do that. But I came tonight with a loud voice. If God told you it belongs to you, you don't have to do anything but obtain what He said is yours. Yours. If he spoke it, he'll do it. If he said it, he'll bring it to pass. Amen. It's a dangerous time when we're seeking after things. You got a miracle ministry. True miracles, not fake, a signs and wonder ministry that is telling them, go look at what God promised you and see, is it any good? Oh, come on, church, that's real familiar with what we're going through today. Yeah. See it every day. Yeah. If he promised it, Moses is saying, see if it's any good. Go see, is they strong men there or are they weak? Now the miracle man is saying to them, go see, are we going to have a hard time getting that or not? Come on, that's what's preached all over the nation today. If you don't do this, you can't receive that. If you ain't been here, you can't receive that. If you want to move of God, you've got to go here. None of that. It's all making us not obtain. Amen. Faith obtains. Faith finds a promise in that book and... It obtains it. Yeah. When a miracle ministry is telling you to do things that God didn't tell you about, you need to check up and listen and pay attention. If God said it belongs to you, you don't need to spy it out. You don't need to check it out. You just need to obtain it. Yeah. Yeah. He picks 12 men. Sends them out of what the land is. Is it fat or lean? Is there wood there? Now God told Moses, this is what I'm giving you as an inheritance. And now he's wanting to know, is it even good? Come on, church. Yeah. Some of you in church, you can't figure out what's good. And what ain't? Is a wood there? And be you of good courage and bring us some of the fruit of the land. Now that it was the time of grapes, they went up and searched the land and the wilderness of Zim unto Rabbi, unto Hamath, and they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron. Where a high man in Sheskai, a high am, Talamai, and the children of Anak were there. Hebron was built seven years before Zion in Egypt. They came unto the brook Eskral and cut down thence a branch with a cluster of grapes. They bare it between two upon a staff and they bought pomegranates and figs. They were gathering a harvest of fruit 
that nobody had ever gathered before. They had grapes so big that it took Joshua to get a stick and put the grapes on it and Caleb to get behind him to carry a pot of grapes back. Glory to God. God's got enough provision in what He promised you that one of you ain't going to be able to carry it all. It's going to take teamwork to bring the provision of God in. Amen. These grapes as big as basketballs. They're carrying them. They've got pomegranates and figs and bringing them. The place was called the Brook of Eshcol because the clusters of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from there. And they returned from the land searching 40 days. Let's skip down to verse 33. Or verse 32. And they brought up. I go. Oh, it's good. Go to verse 30. I wasn't planning on preaching this. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome. Joshua and Caleb. Caleb's idea was, Have you seen them grapes? They're big as basketballs. Don't you remember what God did in the Egyptian world? Let's don't wait. Let's Let's go right now and take, obtain what God has promised us. That should be the people of faith's attitude. I'm going to obtain what's mine. The peoples wrestled and it says uh, Caleb steals them and tells them let's don't wait, let's go right now and get. Faith never holds back. Faith never waits. Once you believe God, you obtain what He said you could have and you walk through the city and show everybody how big a grapes my God can grow. It should have been saying you kings thinks it's something when you get your servant women to feed you a grape. It take all your women. <laughs> take five of them to hold up one of these grapes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it ain't gonna fit in nobody's mouth. Come on, the provision of God to the unbeliever is unbelievable. It's hard to believe that God done that good a thing for somebody. He blessed somebody that greatly. Moved for somebody. It's hard to believe sometimes that Todd Amberg's grapes are really that big. Yeah. 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 I got a lot of buddies back there that's had the back end of the stick to help help me carry my grapes. I can hear. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah, man. A whole generation. You want to know why somebody didn't get their results today or it didn't work for them? And it seems like every time this fellow prays, it works for him every time. He is what the Bible would call an elder that obtains. Faith always is an obtainer. Amen. By faith, the elders obtained. And what did they actually obtain? Was it the grapes? No, Moses one told them to bring the fruit back. They obtained promises. That's right. Come on. Yeah, that's good. Your job hasn't changed today. You're supposed to be a person that obtains whatever it is. And I think in faith we focus a lot on healing and prosperity. And it seems like that's the only fruit in the promised land. But I can tell you, if you're going to be a better man, you're going to obtain that promise. <laughs> yeah. Amen, brother. Come on. Uh, you, you, you think your sleeves made you a better man? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. A preacher not too long ago told 
Lynn, you need to get right with the Lord and shave that face hair off. Well. <laughs> 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 oh, I heard it preached. Me and my buddies hit on a haircut one time. We all liked where we didn't have no sideburns. Very short. We basically bald headed, no sideburns. Preacher started getting up and saying, You boys don't know it. Cutting them sideburns off, that's a punk hairdo. Started in the penitentiary and the punks is the queers. Come on, Scotty. Amen, me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They told me and Scotty that we, we had a queer hairdo because we didn't have no sideburns. It was confusing. I'm going to show you that's what these children of Israel did. We was in churches then that absolutely we saw miracles, signs, and wonders. When they praised, the power of God moved almost every one of those churches I was in. They knew how to praise a glory into the house and get God moving, but they could not figure out whether it was all right to wear a necktie or not wear one, put your hair in a bun or leave it long and they would definitely tell Lynn just like that preacher son you need to shave and if you ask them why did Samson's strength grow in his long hair how did they shave Jesus beard they answered me this son he's in jail they ain't had no razors in there <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and the jailer wouldn't let Jesus keep the hole in the standard up. He didn't give him his bits that day. He couldn't shave. <laughs> Get mad if you want to. Give me verses for the he didn't have no big razors. <laughs> I've got them for you when the children gather together in unity. The oil flows like the dew on Mount Hebron yeah. down Aaron's head through the high priest Aaron's yeah. beard. Yeah. 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 He wasn't in jail. He had his big razors. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, the Lord. Samson's strength uh, was not in a short uh, burr haircut. His strength uh, was the longer and more hippie like he got, uh, the more power he had. Amen. Yeah. Bad women didn't trick him into grow her to growing long hair. She cut it. I wonder about some of you churches that's got everybody cutting their hair. saved at Pastor so-and-so's church, you got to do this. But then if we go fellowship, brother and do that, we can't do this. Come on. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. The tradition of men make his word of no effect. Amen. Faith is a person that absolutely no matter what they obtain, they're not moved by anything, especially, I, you know, I ain't interested in who I was yesterday. That's right. Yes. The church is. Mm -hmm. You seen 12 years ago, Church, they'll talk about it. Ah, yeah. uh, you know what, brother?
brother so-and-so did? No. I'm having a hard enough time keeping me straight than to worry about Brother Doodad. Amen. Yeah. 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 Oh, come on, this is what we're facing in this region. If you want to know why I minister this stuff so much, if we're going to have the glory of God, and if we're going to obtain what God has promised us, we've got to be cautious of miracle men that are telling us to go inspect the fruit that God already promised us to, to go check it out and see if it's good, to see what the water's like, to see how the trees grow. If God God said it's mine. I don't give a flying flip what you think about it. If he said I can have it, I'm going to obtain it. The spies come back and, and you got Joshua and Caleb that are obtainers. People of faith saying the land flows with milk and honey. Look at these grapes. And you got the church saying, yeah, them grapes are the biggest I ever saw. Took two of us and back down from carrying them out. Yeah. 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 That's something we fail to realize too. Harvest time is a lot of work. Yeah. I prayed for years that I get daily income. I don't want weekly paychecks. I want something coming in daily. And when it happens, you go to the mailbox every day and there's money there, you got to go do something because there's an assignment for that money every day. If not like, I'm going to put it in my pocket and just go back in the house. Usually, quick as I get out there, God will say, drive this to here. This is what I... There is work to harvest. Yes, yes, yes. Some of you not going to harvest because you're lazy. Amen. Quarreling about them big old grapes is hard on your back to carry that in. It's hard giving a tithe. It's hard writing checks. No, I, I'll tell you what I did. I found in the Word to where God said He would bless storehouses. Yep. That's right, man. Yep. That's more than one. I went that day to every local bank and opened me up an account. I want an account at your bank. I want one at your bank. I want one at yours. I'm getting storehouses. Oh. And now that income has come every day, and I'm not acting like it's a lot. It may be fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars once. It may be five the next. Yeah. But that five dollars, God will tell me you got to take it here. I spend every day working yeah. with that harvest. Yeah. <laughs> yes, amen. Yeah. Harvest amen. is work. Amen. 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 Yeah, we seen the grapes. The land flowed with milk and honey. Yeah. But look at your neighbor and say, everybody's got a but. Everybody's got a but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it to the worldwide media. Everybody's got a butt. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, yeah, a redneck and stuff makes it memorable and plain. When your leg tells you that it's rotten off and it's hurting and you can't turn over and you can't sleep, that is a butt to the with his stripes I'm healed. But, brother, my leg hurts. So? Yeah. 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 So? It's a butt. Everybody's got butts and they're usually big. Ah, <laughs> oh, you preaching vulgar? No, I ain't. The children of Israel, they saw grapes big as basketball that it took two men to carry, but their butt was so big that they couldn't notice the fruit that God had grown for their provision. Their butt was this report. They yep. giants. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Big opposition to what God has called me to do. Yes. 
I know that there's giants placed in my path, but I can tell you if I'm packing them grapes and the giant steps out there, we're going to take a grape off and knock him on the ground with wine. that big. What's my bananas going It's going to take wagons to haul my bananas off. Don't you judge somebody else's harvest. That's right. That's right. Don't judge somebody else's grapes. Come on, you, you may not realize uh, well, how many mountains and creeks they went over to cut them grapes down and carry them back to provide provision. These was the people that days earlier was wandering around in a desert and Moses would have to beat a rock to get them water and God would have to rain down man to the them and now they've got grapes this big around. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Joshua and Caleb is your crazy word of faith, old time Pentecostal yeah. holiness. Amen. Wild men. Amen. Yeah, amen. <laughs> the Israelites said, Yeah, we see the grapes. They're big. We see the land flows with milk and honey. But there's some men big, big enough over there to eat them grapes. Come on, how many of us think and sees that the world is better at handling money and growing it yeah. than we are? Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come on, it's yeah. easy to see. They do. Yeah, yeah. You want to know why? We lazy. We're looking for the miracle man to show up and throw his stick down. Uh -huh. Take care of us. Yeah. We're looking for him to hit a rock and water us. Why, wow, God dropped manna down for us to eat. Mm. To have more than enough, you're going to have to quit being lazy. Amen. 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 You're going to have to get off your cell phone. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have to turn the TV off. I know old timers preached on it hard and they got off track. Yeah. Some of you old timers out there, you remember our song. 25 years ago, God saved my soul and he told me not to go to the picture show. <laughs> well, now they say it's all right. Bring it right in your home. Sit it right down in the living room floor and let the children look on. Well, no matter how high you jump and shout, well, you can't have God till you throw the show out. Well, no matter how loud you preach and pray, they would sing, you ain't got Jesus in your soul till you throw the television away. I know some of y'all sung that. Watch this. <laughs> They would sing, David went on a house for a woman to see. You can see her too on your television screen. <laughs> David took a man's life so he could have his wife. And if you keep a looking, next time you know you'll be married twice. <laughs> Them old timers got off with that, but there was also some truth in it. Yeah. Well, anything that can capture your attention yeah. for two, three, four, six, eight hours yeah. a day, you are lazy yeah. and don't expect for God to have you yeah. obtain the grace yeah. that I do. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Faithful men abound with blessing. Yes. What is faithful? Somebody does it today. Tomorrow you can depend. Yep. He's going to do it tomorrow. It's 
three weeks from now, you can depend. Yeah. That he's going to do it three. He's faithful. He's yeah. not going to take a day that he watches more television or plays more Facebook games than he listens to God's Word, than he speaks God's Word, yeah. than he meditates God's Word. It takes a lot of work to harvest. Yeah. You are going to not just have to read a couple of verses. You're going to have to hear it and hear it yeah. and hear it and yeah. say it yeah. and say it yeah. and meditate it and meditate it and that ain't even praying yet. That's just the word. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It takes work, but it ain't a lot of work if you realize how big them grapes is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Taking the promised land to the children of Israel was a burden. We want there's giants there. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they had this mindset. We are, but everybody's got a but. Yep. Mm -hmm. Grasshoppers. Yep. Mm -hmm. In their sight. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now come on. Yep. I, I know about grasshoppers. One of the first times I ever got in bad trouble in school was uh, I gathered me up three Pringles cans. <laughs> me and Anthony Blair and the, I think Stevie. Oh, I think. Oh. It's a false accusing you, Stevie. I don't mean it. But it's three of us gathered up Pringles cans full of grasshoppers. And we didn't know what we was doing with them. We were just catching grasshoppers. We might fish with them. And, we brought her Pringles cans to school to kind of show off, uh, see if you caught more grasshoppers than I did. If you did, I'm going to improve tomorrow. Which way? And then we hit on the idea, what would it be like to let these grasshoppers loose on this school bus? The plague of Moses had just came down on bus number 81. There was grasshoppers everywhere. <laughs> I think there's six Pringles cans <laughs> turned loose. And you talk about a bus driver all of a sudden swerving and swarping and the little girls screaming and crying and stuff in their hair. And it was a mess. And we sitting there giggling and laughing holding our Pringles cans. <laughs> for a grasshopper because they're little and these people felt like compared to the inhabitants of the promised land that they were that small. That's what the religious church world is doing to people. Yeah. Yeah. It's making them feel like they're small and unimportant. Yeah. Yeah. They're making them feel like they ain't no way a grasshopper can go in there and carry out them grapes and take them from the giants. There ain't no way. All a grasshopper's good for is hiding and hopping through the grass. Spitting them beer on the floor. Come on, that's what religion will do to you. Yep. Anytime. You see yourself as too small, too weak, not able to obtain what God has called you to obtain. Religion has just made for you the word of God of no effect. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Joshua and Caleb obtained the report. We are well able yeah. to take this mountain. Let's go right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for 40 years I'm waiting. God ain't holding out on you, but as long as you see your self as small and unworthy and not strong enough, as long as that's what you see and what you say, that what you're seeing and what you're saying is what you will get. Yeah. A whole generation that had saw sticks turn into 
into snakes and eat other sticks that turned into snakes. They had saw all the firstborn children die. The water turned to blood. The frogs, the locusts, they were the ones that the sea made great walls. And they don't forget what God did for you yesterday. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And it's all that. There's so many of you that get this close to obtaining what God designed for you to inherit and you give up. You came in and quit. Yeah. Forty years walked around and I'm just a grasshopper. I can't do it. Did you see how busy the old giants was? Yeah. You see how I'm piling, you know what? Me, me and you and five little brothers, we can't take it. You can't whip a giant. And you got Caleb over there. Just turn me loose. Turn me loose. God said, This is my mountain. It's my mountain. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. There's another. Joseph was thrown in the pit in the palace and was over Egypt. His last confession of faith was that his bones would be buried in Israel. When he died in Egypt, yep. they had his bones in that group for 40 years. There's old saints of God that have died believing the promises of God would come to this area and this mountainous regions and the, the communities we lived in. They died believing and they're waiting on somebody yeah. in the younger yeah. generation yeah. to carry their bones into what God had promised them. And for 40 years those bones was carried Amen. around. Yeah. Amen. Does that make Moses' miracles fake? See, there's a lot of you that sees this foolishness in the churches and you're saying it's of the devil and it's fake. I caution you. Moses was a miracle man. Yeah. Signs and wonders. But he could not handle the final inheritance God had. It's too big. It's too impossible. Faith will take you places to where your mind can't understand it. It's too big. And God's always thinking bigger than we are. We're believing for a car. He understands that you should own the car lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next yeah. Come on. We, we do good to believe five dollar bills here. God wants you to own banks. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. That's true. Yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's true. The reason I talk about money, it's easier to see and understand. Moses' miracle ministry is coming to an end. He's still special to God. Watch what you say about these people. They're doing some crazy things. Yeah, they. They're off. They're not obtaining what God wants, but watch what you say. Because mm -hmm. when it comes time for him to die, God attended his funeral. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Walked him out to the edge of the promise. Yes, he did. Yes. He did. He did. Said, Moses, yes. this is what I wanted you to have. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Come on. You wonder what, what was Paul so excited about? Fought a good fight. Yes. Yeah, I kept the faith. Yeah. Right. Moses, that's what I told you you could have. This is what you get. Yeah. God buried that man. Yes. God preached his funeral, did his eulogy, and buried him. You can't tell me that God was bitter at him. That was his friend. Yeah. 
watch it. But now, God comes to Joshua. Says, Moses, my servant is now dead. Go over and possess the land that I promised you. He was 40 some years old when that promise came to him. And now for 40 years, he's been saying, let's take that mountain. And so he's 80 some year old. And Caleb stands up and says, I'm as strong, Lord, as I was 40 years ago. I am well able still to take What's your excuse? Yeah. Faith obtains. You had an 80 year old man that his buddy just heard God say, now it's time. Every person in that generation is now dead. God will let a whole generation die if they are not in faith. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Amen. Without yeah. the promise. Yes. And he'll keep two old men that's still speaking his word. It don't matter how old you are. It ain't over yet. Your time ain't up. You're not over the hill. You are about to, to run and take your mountain. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Strong as I ever was, Lord. Moses, my servant, stand. Joshua, now go. And then the conquest of Joshua started. Are you an obtainer or a complainer? That's good. That's a word. Oh, yeah, that's prophetic. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's two types of people in that story. The elders that obtain good reports and the complainers that bicker and gripe about how big the problems are in their life. Ain't nobody facing what I am. Ain't nobody been through what I've been through. Ain't nobody got it hard as my family. I don't know why it always happened to my family. Ain't nobody went through what we've went through. Our giants are big. You are either a obtainer or you are a complainer. And I came today to tell you, you complainers are going to get exactly what you say. Yeah. You ain't able to take it. And you obtainers, I don't care how long you wait, how long you stand, you will be strong enough way up in age to get what God says belongs to me. Faith obtains. Yeah. Everybody stand. Yeah. If you are out there, a lot of you are wanting CDs. If I tell you to message me and you post it on that wall and don't message me, I won't respond to you. You can't follow instructions. <laughs> Come on, that's, that's the principles. God told them to take the mountain and Moses wanted to do it another day. If you want to see the message me, if you like what we're saying and what we're about, go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like, comment, and share this video. It helps us out. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every ear in attendance that we obtain like the elders of old and that we hush our complaining mouths. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen.